There are three different methods you can use to get a sticky header or menu for your site. You can use the function built into your theme, you can use a plugin, or you can code it yourself. The best option, if it's available, is to use the sticky menu feature built into your theme. This will usually give you the most functionality and best user experience across multiple screen sizes. Nearly all of the most popular themes have a sticky header option. This includes Astra, GeneratePress, Divi, Neve, Xtheme, Avada, and Cadence. For example, here's how to set up your sticky navigation in GeneratePress theme. To make your menu sticky, you first need to set your navigation location to either above or below the header. Then go to Layout, Sticky Navigation, and simply choose On to enable Sticky Nav. You can also combine your header and navigation by going to Layout, Header, and select Use Navigation as Header. If your theme doesn't have a sticky feature, don't worry, there are still two other methods. First, it's pretty easy to make a sticky header with just a few lines of CSS code, thanks to the new Position Sticky feature. And we can even turn the stickiness on or off for specific screen sizes. First, you'll need to know the ID or class of the element that you want to target. To get this, go into any desktop web browser, then right-click on the element, choose Inspect, then hover over the element until you find the right one. For example, on this site, the header ID is masthead and the class is site-header. It will likely be different in your theme. Now that you have a selector to target, we can write our CSS code. Put this wherever you put your other custom CSS. The additional CSS section of the WordPress customizer is a good option. Now we can write our CSS. First, add the selector that you want to target. If it's a class name, use a period in front. If it's an ID, use the pound sign. So for example, on my site, I'd either write pound sign masthead to target the ID or period site dash header for the class. First, let's set the element to position sticky. Next, we need to specify an offset. That is how far from the top of the page it should be stuck. For a header, this will usually be zero unless there's another sticky element above it. And now if we scroll, you can see it already sticks to the top of the browser window. But you may want to add a couple more rules. First, I'm going to specify a high Z index to make sure nothing overlaps the header on scroll, like this text in the right sidebar. I'll set it to 999. Next, you can see that the WordPress admin bar is overlapping our header. This only affects logged in users, but it's still easy to change. Just add a rule, class admin bar, and then your selector, site header for me, and the rule is top 32 pixels, which will move the header down the height of the admin bar only for logged in users. We can also turn the sticky header on or off for specific screen sizes by writing what's known as a media query. For example, this media query will contain rules that only apply if the screen is a minimum of 768 pixels wide, which is my theme's responsive breakpoint. Then we can copy and paste our previous CSS inside the media query and delete the rules above. And when I resize the screen, the header stops being sticky when it hits the mobile breakpoint, right here. Now, our third option for sticky headers is to use a plugin. There are two popular free ones available, WP Sticky Anything and My Sticky Menu. Unfortunately, both of these have added paid versions and removed some of the advanced functionality that used to be free. In my opinion, the best of the two is My Sticky Menu by Premio. So let's install and activate. Then go to the plugin settings. First, we need the class or ID of the element that we want to target, just like in our CSS example. So for this demo, I'm going to make my navigation bar sticky, the one below the header. So first, let's right click and inspect to get the selector we want to target. You can see the ID here is site navigation. So first, let's add our selector. Mine is an ID, so I'll write pound sign site navigation. Next, you can set a Z index to make sure the header is on top of everything else. The default looks good to me. You can set an effect when the header becomes sticky. I'll go with slide in. Then just like our media query earlier, you can disable the stickiness on small screens. Just enter the breakpoint you want here. Make sure you don't leave this field blank or it will stop your sticky menu from working. Instead, set it to zero if you don't want to specify a custom breakpoint. You can also set a custom background color when the item is sticky, as well as a text color. And you can choose a transition delay and opacity to make it partially see-through. 
The rest of the options are pro only features, such as page level targeting. So we'll just scroll down and click save. Then if we go to the front end and refresh, there's our sticky navigation bar with new custom colors and opacity set by the plugin. Now, one common issue that comes up when using a sticky menu is that it will overlap your jump or anchor links when you scroll to them. This can easily be fixed with a bit of CSS code. For example, this rule targets any H2 or H3 element that has an ID and sets a top offset for when it's used as an anchor. In this case, 100 pixels. And now when you scroll to the anchor, the heading is positioned perfectly below the sticky header. To learn more about how to add and use anchor links, watch this video in the top right corner. Now to keep learning, watch one of these videos right here. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You won't want to miss any of the amazing tutorials we have coming out next. And to really level up your website game, sign up for the free newsletter. The link is in the video description below.